Oh, I was afraid it was you. I, on the other hand, am quite comfortable that it's you. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. The dinner to which you so graciously invited me will be a little late. I got involved. Oh, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> My popovers, my popovers. A pox on your popovers. Oh, you're so exciting when you rang. <laughs> Modern jurisprudence? Landmarks of the Supreme Court? <laughs> The people of Minnesota versus Applegate. Oh, is that a fascinating case? To the people of Minnesota. Maybe even to Applegate, but why do you? I got my notice this afternoon. I've been called for jury duty. And am I prepared? I'm sure of it. But it's not necessary. I know someone who can get you out of it. Get me out of it? Why? Don't you think I can do it? Be a juror? Not just a juror. An intelligent, rational, discerning, unbiased, unemotional... Mature gem of a jury. I think it can be all of those things and adorable as well. Jurors shouldn't be adorable. They should be logical, firm, and fair. Three of your most endearing qualities. Donald, you are not taking me seriously. <laughs> On the contrary, I'm taking you very seriously. I was just thinking about my parents in St. Louis. What about them? They're expecting us. Jury duty isn't going to interfere with our trip. <laughs> For how much? I don't bet. And I don't shirk my civic duty, either. Honey, I'm not saying that jury duty isn't important, but it's not necessarily the big deal you're making it. You wouldn't say that if you were on trial and they could only find 11 people. Oh, there are always plenty of people. Well, there wouldn't be if everybody went around saying that. But my parents... With whom serving on a jury is not going to interfere would be the first to admit I was right. No. No, I'm the first. Do your duty. You have no further objections? <laughs> None. You're glad I'm going to be on a jury? Delighted. You think I'll be good? Logical, firm, and fair. <laughs> and if you were on trial and I was on the jury? There's nobody in the world I'd rather be convicted by than that girl. <laughs> Well, we should get the case today. After that, not too long. Oh, I better go in. What time is it? It's about 10.30. We were supposed to take off for St. Louis half an hour ago. Well, who ever thought I'd get on a jury the last possible day? Or that the trial would go on nearly a week? I did. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I had to do it. You understand. And I'm sure your parents do. What, what did your mom say? She said she defrosted a 20-pound turkey. Well, the turkey will keep. And besides, the, the minute the case is decided, we'll leave. <laughs> I know, and turkeys do keep. Meantime, I might as well spend the first day of my vacation in court. <laughs> At least you get to see me in action. That's always fun. <laughs> oh, if you believe the plaintiff, Margaret Franklin, in that she was approached by the defendant, Alex Franklin, and that he had in hand an ashtray, and that he was, in fact, intent upon and did strike her with it, then you must find Alex Franklin, guilty as charged. Now, if you believe the defendant, that his wife had been drinking steadily from a bottle of sherry and under this influence fell of her own weight, sustaining the loss of two teeth against the rung of a chair, then you must find Alex Franklin not guilty. 
The bailiff will escort you to the jury room. Mom, Mom, listen. Uh, what I wanted to tell you was the jury just got the case. It looks pretty clear cut to me, so I think we should be able to leave in the morning. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get the 10 a.m. flight to St. Louis, and with the time difference, well, we can still be there by lunch. Turkey sandwiches sound swell, Mother. <laughs> Send in a bottle of scotch and 12 glasses, eh? Make it 11 glasses. <laughs> you drink scotch, uh, Miss Marie? Not while I'm on jury duty, Mr. Packard. Oh, you're a purist, eh? Huh? Hardly. Well, if you can't wear it, don't knock it. <laughs> oh, there's two over there, huh? We can be right together. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, why don't we have lunch? Lunch? Yeah, well, if we take a vote now and everybody agrees, well, we'll it'll all be over and we'll blow lunch. You mean you don't want to vote now just so you can get a free lunch? Well, we're entitled. Well, I, for one, am not hungry. And besides, I have an awful lot of evidence to present. I think we should take the vote on whether that dreadful little man is guilty. Well, I think we should keep an open mind, at least until all the evidence against the wife in question is reviewed. Big deal. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Foreman, will we vote in support of due process of law? I'll do what anybody wants. And what anybody wants, it's be fine with me. Mr. Talley, we're voting. Okay, okay. <laughs> How do you spell guilty? U I or I U? U I. G U I L T Y. <laughs> Uh, pardon me. Is the Franklin jury still in there? Yep. Well, well, aren't they coming out for dinner? It was sent in. Oh. Well, I, I wonder how I might get in touch with one of the jurors. You can't. Judge Crane's very strict about tampering with his juries. <laughs> no, no. Look, I don't want to tamper. I just want to find out how things are going. That's tampering. <laughs> Look, this has nothing to do with the case. You see, I'm supposed to fly to St. Louis in the morning on a 10 o'clock plane. I flew to Chicago once, but uh, I went in the afternoon. Oh. <laughs> well, you see, I'm supposed to go with one of the jurors, but she doesn't know I made the reservations. When I went, it was uh, with my sister. I see. <laughs> well, look, what I want to find out is if we might not make that plane. <laughs> we almost didn't make ours. <laughs> look, there's no way I can get in touch. With the jury? Yes. If they get locked up tonight, they can call their families. But that's it. Somehow I have a feeling we're not going to make this plane. Well, you can always go in the afternoon. That's when I went. <laughs> The count is guilty 10 and not guilty 2. All right, now who's not guilty? I don't believe in guilt. It's a syndrome. What does that mean? Well, it means we'll be locked up overnight in a very nice hotel. I have to go home and feed my cats. Food, booze, no haircuts. I tried that. A little laundry's okay. <laughs> my wife will go to your house and feed your cats. Thank you, no. It's obvious that the defendant is a vicious brute. Why, he struck that poor defenseless woman in the mouth with an ashtray. That's what she says. She has no front teeth. That only proves she has no front teeth. She could have eaten too much candy as a child. Now, folks, l let's don't argue. Look, why don't we just call it a night, huh? <laughs> Go to the hotel and have a few drinks. <laughs> For once, I agree with the majority. I think we should take another try at reaching a verdict. Of guilty. Of not guilty. <laughs> this will be the room. And the windows were, uh, here. The door of the room was here. The chair in which Mrs. Franklin was seated was here. Now. Mr. Franklin crossed the room. Then, Mrs. Franklin crossed to Mr. Franklin. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Now, I don't know whether he's guilty or not, but I win. <laughs> Mr. Packard, I was trying to make a point. Well, you've got to grant me that's funny. <laughs> I'll grant you whimsy. I won't grant you funny. Oh, except. <laughs> now, the point I was trying to make was, under the aforementioned circumstances, would a man actually hit his wife with an ashtray? Well, that depends on the wife and the size of the ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly, it depends on the man. Some men, of course, do hit their wives. And then, of course, some men leave their wives. I can't help but feel that Alex Franklin is more a lever than a hitter, psychiatrically speaking. <laughs> now, let's go back to his childhood, for instance. Oh. Nine guilty. Ten guilty. Eleven guilty. Not guilty? Mr. Packard says it's a, a very nice hotel with, with very good service. And a little laundry's okay, too. Hello, operator. This is 222. Would you please get me Bryant 99970? Thank you. Hello? Hello, Daddy? Daddy? It's your darling daughter, Daddy. We're allowed to make one phone call to our immediate family to let them know where we are. Where are you? Locked up for the night in the Commerce Plaza Hotel. Deadlocked? Well, there are quite a few minds that have to be changed. Let me make a wild guess. Like 11 minds that have to be changed. Obviously, I can't say. You don't have to. Have you spoken to Donald's parents? Not since this morning. I didn't know what to say. His mother's expecting us on a 10 o'clock plane in the morning. She's making turkey sandwiches for lunch. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, all right, honey, I'll change the reservations. But whenever we get there, I suggest you ask for turkey in various dishes and don't complain if it's dry. <laughs> I won't. Good night, Dad. Well, sleep well, dear. Don't forget to brush your teeth. <laughs> are wailing away. <laughs> Whatever happened to silence? Whatever happened to me? <laughs> What's an artist doing hung up with right, wrong, guilt? You call that progress? You call that civilization? I call it Toonzak. What are you doing in my room? I guess they put us together. I really rather doubt that. 222. 232. Well, it's this jury duty just wigging me out, Dig. I think so. I mean, I didn't try to burn my jury notice or like that. That's a good sign. But it bugs me. Yeah, well, look, why don't you just relax and, and try and... Swing with it. It's just not my bag. Mr. Talley, I believe this is your bag. It's a bad trip, man. Man. That's right. Cancel two on the 10 a.m. flight to St. Louis. Don Hollinger and Anne Marie. 
Marie is her last name. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nice, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is it, Mr. Packard? Well, for uh, openers, you could call me Jack. Huh? I prefer calling you Mr. Packard, Mr. Packard. <laughs> A rose by any other name. <laughs> Shakespeare. Good guess. <laughs> I just thought I'd uh, stop by and let you know we had a little something in common. Huh? <laughs> well, that's very sweet of you to go to all that trouble just to let me know. <laughs> well, good night, Mr. Packard. I uh, know that you think I'm a freeloader, but see, not with girls. Huh? <laughs> I've given some very nice presents in my time. Perfume, stockings, uh, some beautiful scarves. And Mr. Packard, if I've misjudged you romantically, then I apologize. But I haven't misjudged you in the jury room. And as long as we're alone here... Hold it, hold it. I know you're a purist. I have no intention of discussing the case with you tonight. <laughs> in fact, I won't even uh, mention it, right? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I... Uh... I couldn't care less about the case. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. How can you say a thing like that? I just don't understand how anyone, even you, could say a thing like that about, about any jury case when Shh. each opinion... Oh, I might have known. Circumstantial! <laughs> oh, will you please come in here? Thanks. Hey, nice place you got here, huh? <laughs> Mr. Packard. I have no intention of discussing this case either, and you're entitled to any opinion you honestly hold, but you're not entitled not to care. It's a free country. Uh-huh, and that's why. Being on a jury is one of the, of the very most important responsibilities. I mean, holding somebody's future right in your hands. How can you possibly not care? I really don't want to discuss it. Well, I really don't understand you. Well, now, that makes two of us, because I don't understand you either. Why? <laughs> Well, here we are, an okay-looking girl and a well-built, attractive, good-looking man in his prime. And what do we do? We stand around talking politics. Politics? Ethics? What have you got against me? I've got looks, a sense of humor, uh, experience. You might be interested to know that I am not in the least bit interested in what you're interested in. Why not? I mean, I could understand if you're a, a, a librarian, but uh, an actress? <laughs> oh! oh! That, Mr. Packard, was for all the actresses who've been insulted by all the Mr. Packards, from Sarah Bernhardt right up to me. And it also goes for a couple of librarians I know, too. I forgot my electric toothbrush. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> Why explain? I know a closet swinger when I see one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mom. How's it going? <laughs> a, a turkey croquettes would be fine, Mom, <laughs> but we're still in New York. Well, it was late last night, and I was hoping this morning. Well, you see, the jury's still out, so I guess you better tell Dad not to meet us. He already did. <laughs> well, Mother, I know it's hard to park, but the plane only just left New York. <laughs> no, Mom, I'm not being disrespectful. <laughs> well, then what way? No, Mom, Anne is not undependable. It's not as though she was single-handedly holding up a decision. I know how you all feel, but I've just got to try again. Oh. No, really, I, I know that Alex Franklin is innocent. I, I just haven't been able to prove it until now. Last night, I, I, I couldn't sleep for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and suddenly, it just, it all came very clear. And, and I'd like to show you what I mean. I'll be Mrs. Franklin. Now, we've all agreed that she was sitting in a chair, <laughs> smoking a cigarette and drinking a little sherry. <laughs> According to Mr. Franklin, they were having an argument. And as he approached her with an ashtray, she rose, moved around the chair, from the right side and came toward him 
on the left side of the chair. But Mr. Franklin said that with all that sherry, she sort of lost her balance and <laughs> fell, hitting her jaw on the rung of the chair and knocking out two teeth. See? Would you show us that again? I really don't think that's necessary. But according to Mrs. Franklin, she didn't fall. She was hit with the ashtray. And I think if we reenact that version, it'll show us something very important. Would someone like to be Mr. Franklin? Well, as long as you're Mrs. Franklin. Huh? Uh, fine. All righty. Now, if you'll just take this, please, and stand right over there. Good. Now, if you would please come toward me with the ashtray in your right hand, as Mrs. Franklin said Mr. Franklin did, mm -hmm. and swing the ashtray at my jaw. As you can see, the ashtray swung by Mr. Franklin would have to hit Mrs. Franklin on the left side of the jaw. But the bruise on Mrs. Franklin's face and the two teeth she lost were on the right side of the jaw. And that could only have happened not if Mr. Franklin had hit her, but if she had hit her own face on the chair. I rest my case. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We, we find the defendant, Alex Franklin, not guilty. No! No! It's an outrage! It's a miscarriage of justice! <laughs> sit down already, will you? Listen, don't you tell me to sit down. It's outrageous! <laughs> don't be such a poor sport. I am not a poor sport! <laughs> shut up, will you? Look, don't tell me to shut up! I don't have to shut up! <laughs> Bailiff, arrest this man! The old backhand. <laughs> this jury is dismissed. I have a feeling we're not going to be asked back for jury duty very soon again. Don't take it too hard, kid. Thanks, Jack. Guilty. We're all of us guilty, guilty, guilty. I think I'll capture this in plastic. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Better that a hundred guilty go free than one innocent be convicted. Right. Thank you, Donald. But I hope you learned something. I certainly did. Watch out for the old backhand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding. Well, you get a lot of mail. I'm very popular. Hmm. Hello. Mom? Hi. Good news, we're ready to leave. Uh, no, 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 we missed the four o'clock plane. Did Dad do that again? <laughs> well, Ma Mom, look, we'll be on the eight o'clock plane for sure. You what? N no, no, a turkey chow mein sounds great, Mom. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> the turkey did dry up after all. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. You know, if this were television, you'd get a letter now saying you were on a grand jury. Ha-ha. Uh -huh. You didn't. Donald, this trip is interfering with a lot more than jury duty. What? I'm going to miss the annual fur sale at Mellinger's. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Turkey chow mein. <laughs>